So everybody's had a bad hair day, right? Okay, I'm gonna tell you why a bad hair day can be a good thing. A bad hair day is really just a flaw in our vision of ourselves, and we all wanna be perfect. We're programmed to chase perfection all our lives. Little girls are starting dieting before they're practically old enough to start school. Women are flocking to plastic surgeons to buy Angelina Jolie's lips or J-Lo's butt. <laughs> Everything is photoshopped, and what's not perfect, we don't post on Facebook. Chasing perfection is a prison. It's a mindset that narrows your vision and takes away your freedom to be the artist of your own life. Now, whether you're after the perfect blouse, the perfect house, or the perfect spouse, we all have different visions of what perfect would look like. Mine was shaped by my dad. He was very dominating, I was very deferential, and things that weren't perfect, he tried to fix. I didn't make the honor roll, I got grounded. I wasn't thin enough, he put me on a diet. I was always on a diet. And no matter how thin I got, I never felt thin enough, which probably sounds familiar. There was actually only one body part I was ever satisfied with. My hair was such a big part of my identity that a bad hair day had the potential to bring me to my knees. Two months after I first felt the lump in my breast, there was more hair in my hand than on my head. And what was left on my head was just resting there, and it looked and felt like a rough straw welcome mat. Welcome to chemotherapy. I can't show you how I look bald. I was never that brave. I was so trapped in that prison of perfection that I just couldn't see a way out. So I never allowed anyone to see me bald. Not my friends, not my children, not my husband. I couldn't even look in the mirror and see myself. That's an example of things that happen to all of us, things out of our control in our lives, things break that we can't fix, and not just bodies, broken hearts, broken dreams, broken families. And it's what you do with the pieces that break that can make you. Now, I wasn't facing just bad hair days. I was facing death. My mom had died of cancer at 41. I had a terrible prognosis, and I felt completely doomed to repeat her destiny. And the worst part was my children. I wanted so badly for their lives to have only good things, and my kids had already experienced some bad things. I'd been divorced. I had just remarried and move my kids away from their dad. And now they could face being motherless even younger than I was. Why did my kids have to learn so young that life isn't fair? This thought tormented me. But I would put on my happy mommy face, like the day that I got my new breast prosthesis after the mastectomy, I stuck it in my sports bra, I had the wig on, and I tried to be upbeat when I went in to say goodnight to my son. Daniel was just starting first grade. He's all tucked in with a thousand stuffed animals and one real one. <laughs> and as I'm bending down, to give him a kiss goodnight under the bunk bed, my brand new breast pops out of the bra and hits him smack in the face. I laughed too. 
And the sound of laughter was so unusual in our house at that time that my daughter came in from the other room to see what was going on. And she says, Mommy, last week your hair fell out on Daniel. Now your breast falls out on Daniel. <laughs> it's not fair. <laughs> All the good things happen to Daniel. <laughs> Laughter is so healing. It was such a big deal for me to be able to laugh at the thing that scared me the most. And it also showed me that my kids didn't need lives that were perfect to be okay, and neither did I. So that was sort of the beginning of the end of my pity party, and it cracked open the door to my prison. But I couldn't really escape from perfection until I learned to listen to my own inner voice, which is what we really all need to find out and discover who we really are. Now, I had never been artistic. I got C's in art that kept me off that honor roll. And even as an adult, I didn't have enough faith in my own artistic eye to pick out wallpaper. And yet, when I was looking for ways to escape the stress of cancer, I discovered that for me, painting ceramics at those little pottery studios was better than meditation or therapy. So I went a lot. And I got a little better the more I painted. And then, one day, I broke one of the dishes from this set that I had painted. And instead of tossing it out, I took the pieces and I put them around a mirror and I made a mosaic and I liked it. So I stopped painting dishes and I started painting tiles and I would paint them and then I would break them and I made mosaics and I got so addicted to this and I loved it so much that I opened my own art studio. <laughs> Something about that process was magical for me, and it really spoke to my inner voice. And then I realized what it was, which I forgot to show you pictures of my mosaics. <laughs> the art of making mosaics was exactly what I was doing with my life, what we all can do. I was picking up broken pieces and rearranging them to make something different, something that could be beautiful in a new way. And I had plenty of broken stuff to work with, like my family. My kid's dad lived 300 miles away, and our divorce had really messed up my version of the perfect family, so I rearranged the pieces. When he would come to visit the kids, I made him part of our lives in the new community. He would go places with us and hang out at our house. My ex-husband and my new husband played golf together. You think this was what I imagined as my perfect family? Not even close. But what family is perfect, really? We all have the capacity for adaptation in our DNA. It's what makes us human. So think of resilience as an art form. We aren't copying celebrities' lives, we aren't perfecting our lives, we're creating them. Whether or not you think you're artistic, you are an artist creating a life with what you have. And you get better with practice. And often, it's those broken pieces that really help you have the opportunity to think out of the box and to grow. My break with perfection changed everything including even how I saw myself on the outside. Now, during cancer, I had very heavy-duty chemotherapy, and I just couldn't eat. And so every day I would get on the scale, and every day <sighs> the number would go down. Sometimes you get what you wish for. And I had planned to have breast reconstruction, where they take your tummy tissue and they use it to make breasts but I was so skinny, I didn't even have enough tissue to make one size A breast. When I recovered, a little while later, I was still minus the body parts, 
But now, like now, I have enough tummy tissue to make a set for me and share leftovers. <laughs> but finally, for the first time, I could really appreciate my body with all its imperfections. But those pesky fakes kept popping out at inopportune moments, like they floated out of my bathing suit when I was snorkeling at the Great Barrier Reef. <laughs> so I took a dive into authenticity, and I stopped wearing them. Just like these amazing women who are part of a Facebook group that I'm in, I so admire their amazing ability to see and find the beauty and the power in the imperfections. Now, I don't have that courage, but I have the same broken body parts, so I created something in my own way. I was no longer wearing a bra, so I thought outside the bra, and I created boobalas to show, <laughs> to show that our woman's breasts don't define who we are. And, and <laughs> now, I'm proud that I survived cancer, but we all face challenges, and this is one we all face, aging. We're taught to fear it and fight it, and that's why so many women feel lost and invisible when they get closer to 50. Now, whether you tighten your skin or loosen your belt, your potential for perfection slips away over time, and the senior years are at the very bottom of that slippery slope. My next birthday, I'll be officially a senior citizen, 65. It's actually a little bit hard to say that. <laughs> but, you know, what's ahead, according to the ads aimed at me, are discounts, decline, and diapers. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, I'm supposed to be winding down. But actually, like many women I know, I'm just winding up for my next act. Women of this age are master artists of resilience. And when you're not worried about perfection, the year you were born doesn't define you any more than a set of boobs does. And besides, whatever the ads say, there's no such thing as anti-aging. We're all headed in the same direction. <laughs> if we're lucky, that's the thing. The secret to being satisfied at any age isn't having perfection, it's having perspective. Now, not recommending cancer as a teaching tool. But for me, the bigger the number, the happier the birthday, because it's one more year I got to have. So I'll take it. Even though nothing, nothing in my life looks anything like I thought perfect would look. I'm not posting a selfie every time I notice a new wrinkle. I'm not jumping for joy when it takes me longer getting out of bed in the morning, but I do feel grateful and privileged every day I wake up because I can keep on picking up those broken pieces like we all can and rearranging them to make something different that can be beautiful in a new way. And when you're doing that, you are the artist creating your own life. And when you're free from that prison of perfection, you don't care so much about bad hair days. It's just hair and just days. To me, that's perfect.